It was uh, quite a, a milestone in a sense. Uh, it was a first because I was the first woman to become the head of a multinational company. Having said that, I'd like to say that uh, you know it, I didn't um, sort of create a stir or anything. It wasn't that I was appointed and there was a big um, uh, hype about it. But within OUP, there were issues because a lot of the male employees uh, were shocked and they didn't expect me to be to uh, become the head and they made life very difficult for me um, and I think there that's where I would like to mention that being a woman was a handicap as it has been later I mean it's not some, uh, something that uh, I allowed to affect me in any way but certainly it, it uh, created challenges and so many times people have told me that you can't give us orders. My reaction was that, you know, if they said you can't do this or you can't do that, I would say I can and I will. And I actually showed it by doing it. It wasn't a big multinational then. It wasn't that well known. It didn't have such a profile that it does have now. And, uh, you know, in those days, uh, and for many years, I was given a free hand. Of course, I had to operate within a framework, but it was almost like running my own business. And I treated it like my own business. I, you know, the passion that I put in it, the commitment, the hard work, uh, it was as if it's my own business. And actually that is the only way that you can uh, be successful as a CEO or as a, a proprietor of your own business. I joined Oxford University Press in 1979 and I was in, a, I mean supposedly my job was a, a field job to promote uh, OUP books throughout the Punjab and in those days as it is called the uh, Northwest Frontier Province. So I used to travel a lot and I would visit schools and universities, medical colleges, booksellers. I really got to know the market. I felt that uh, this is something I can do myself. You know, I became very ambitious and um, I wanted to be a, re a real publisher because in those days Oxford University Press was publishing less and importing more. So in 1986, I launched my own publishing house. It was called Sayyid Books. The business was doing well. I was growing, um, the, but I wasn't publishing. And uh, for that, I really needed uh, a lot of investment. Uh, in the meantime, uh, OUP contacted me and asked me to come back. My mother and my sister discouraged me and they said that you know you're the proprietor of your own business <laughs> which is growing and at some stage you'll be able to publish um, but you know that might have taken some years and despite their discouragement I, I just felt that uh, I'll, I'll have access to resources that will enable me to publish. I think that it's very important to have mentors, it's also very important to have buddies um, you know, your peers who, with whom you have a, a meeting of minds. Uh, well, you know, I used to teach at the Loha American School and the person who was the, the superintendent was an American woman uh, and I, you know, I liked the way that she used to work. Uh, and she was, run, she was running the whole school and I was actually a teacher. Uh, I, I could say that she was one of my mentors. And uh, for example, um, what I found was that, uh, what I learned from her was her total professional uh, attitude towards work. And uh, I remember uh, two things that I can mention right now. That whenever she was traveling or going away on holiday, she would make a, a long list of to-do things and start ticking them off. And she would say, well, now I can go on my holiday. And I thought, what a professional way to, I mean, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't sound like a big significant thing, but you know, it just shows your uh, sense of responsibility to your um, profession. And the second lesson that I learned from her was uh, that um, she said that, you know, Amina, if anything, you find that anything is remiss, or if somebody doesn't uh, do uh, whatever their role is, you know, they don't, don't fulfill their role in any small way, don't accept it. And again, that was something that has stayed with me. And uh, I have never accepted uh, work 
at a lower level or at a some substandard level and i think that has helped me throughout my career uh, i really can't think of uh, any high profile or any ceo in pakistan who's actually written about their experience uh, and you know we need such books for our universities i think our students should study them uh, and they should be role models for them i was always very fond of reading and i used to um, i had that um, interest that if i started a book and i enjoyed it then i would read the entire series and you know at home we had an atmosphere of a lot of uh, you know a very literary kind of atmosphere my mother was a uh, a poet she would r uh, write uh, a poem at the drop of a hat on any occasion um and uh, my aunt was kuratulen heather the no famous novelist i think um Uh, parents have to make uh, set an example they should be seen buying books reading books and enjoying enjoying books uh, rather than um, you know in other pursuits for example we often told that books are so expensive uh, but you know people will go and eat in a in a five star restaurant um, where you and you can't get parking place outside but you know when it comes to buying a book they say it's expensive so the value system has to change instead of buying um, fancy toys or um fancy you know shoes for for their children i think parents should be buying books for birth for birthdays and occasions books should be given as presents so it has to be brought into the day to day life parents should take their children to bookshops or to libraries we do need more libraries in pakistan that's a huge disadvantage because i do feel that one should not have to buy every book that one reads you know sometimes i wish that uh, i uh, because sometimes you read a book and that's uh, you know uh then you don't need it after that you don't keep every book in your at home uh, well i think you know i, I read uh, onri onri tush who's written um, a book on aurangzeb uh, it's a thin book but that made a huge impact on me it, you know it was a kind of a paradigm shift in my thinking uh, because she has presented uh, a new um, you know image of aurangzeb which is nothing like what we have learned been taught all our lives i think i might ha i feel that i could have spent more time with the, with my friends parents my children uh because i i just feel that i was so driven and so obsessed about my work um that uh, you know for example when my f uh, when my father died i wasn't by his bedside i was in office and i've never forgiven myself for that because i do feel and actually at some stage in my life i realized that and i made that kind of change i didn't create a uh, sort of divisions between my home and my work i let them overlap and that actually worked very well for me i wish i had introduced that earlier you know in the sense that if uh, my child was ill i wouldn't go to work then i would stay at home i could have applied it earlier and i think i might have been i might have had less of a guilty conscience <laughs>